thanks for joining me. Um, in some of my previous videos, I have spent a little bit of time introducing electron configurations and ion formation. In this video, I want to kick it up notch a little bit and expand it to help you understand a little bit more about transition elements. Okay, when you gain and lose electrons, our focus will always be on those valence electrons. Valence electrons are your outermost S and P. So you find your highest N value and any S and P electrons are called valence electrons. All of the other electrons are referred to as core electrons. So let's take a look at the valence electrons for lead ion. The lead ion, the highest number in the lead configuration would have been here, I would have had a 6P2, all right? And then what I would do is to become lead plus two, it first loses those 6P2 electrons. Loss of two electrons makes it less negative by two. Then the second ion would lose both the P's and the S's. That's shown here. Notice I still have my 4F and my 5D. Um, it's commonly thought that you always lose electrons to the previous noble gas for metals, but you don't really because the previous noble gas is right there. So not all metals will land at the previous noble gas. You have to evaluate their valence electrons. So I lost the S and the P, so that's how you get to have lead four plus, okay? Now, what gets more challenging are the transition metals because technically the transition metals with a few irregular configurations, copper is an irregular configuration. Chromium is an irregular configuration. If you are an IB, you need to know those irregular configurations. You need to know that even though you would have predicted this to be 4s2, 3d4, electrons are a little elusive. Sometimes they do things we don't expect. You would have expected copper to be 4s2, 3d9 but instead we see a little jump and this is all about maximizing attractive forces and minimizing repulsive forces okay um, so if you are in IB that is something you do need to know but if you look at all the rest of these these all have two valence electrons so one might think if you lose your outer S and P's that you would have all ions that were either plus one if they lost for the irregulars or plus two. But indeed, the transition metals do all sorts of um, more interesting things with their electrons. And um, so for me, the concept of valence electrons with the transition elements is not the most meaningful or helpful concept. Um, you will find that most, but not all transition metals have multiple charges associated with them. And what often happens is they'll lose the S and then lose one D at a time after that. Here, it lost the two S's and then these others lose a D, one right after another. And even though all of these are theoretically possible, they're not all equally probable or stable. So this chart shows you the most stable ions. And depending on your professor or your teacher, you may have to memorize them. So for copper, we have the copper plus one ion, so copper Roman numeral one ion, 
and we have the copper Roman numeral 2 ion. Okay, iron. You have the iron, whoops, I can't spell, iron 2 ion, and you have the iron 3 ion, but iron can do a number of other things depending on the other environment, the other elements with which it's bonding. Okay, so I just think this is a really helpful reference table. The purple references the most common charges or uh, oxidation states that you will see for this. And so I thought for, you know, AP and college and IB, it would be helpful for you to see how these emerged. Again, losing the S's typically first and then the D's one right after another. And even though, again, they're all possible, they're not all equally probable. So hopefully this gives you a little bit of introduction to those really tricky transition elements. And if you really want to have your mind blown, I want you to take a look at zinc. Although zinc is very commonly clustered with transition metals, it's technically not a transition metal because it has a full D sublevel. So you ought to do some research into that one. IB, if you're an IB student, you better know that baby. Okay? So just a little bit of extra tidbit just because I love y'all. So good luck with your journey of chemistry. And for all my kiddos, as always, this is your best chemistry teacher signing off.